studying to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. You started on your study and then you changed courses, more mm -hmm. or less. Why? Um, the more I began to learn about how life functions at a basic level, the more I learned about cell biology and biochemistry, just the more fascinated I became with that particular area of science, more so than just the prospects of becoming a physician. So uh, it was really uh, a love for biochemistry that was ignited in my pre-med program that caused me to really shift gears. Uh, it's just, um, I guess as a, a little kid growing up, I always thought that it would be fun to be an explorer. And I never really felt like that was a realistic career goal because what were you going to explore, right? But when I uh, began to be exposed to the inner workings of the cell, I realized that this is almost functioning like a, another world. And so this really became a world that I could explore. And so it's just a fascinating microscopic world uh, that was ripe for exploration. Well, it was um, one just coming to the appreciation that these systems are incredibly complex and incredibly sophisticated and operate in just such a precise, uh, almost clever manner. And I had enough experience at that point as a chemist to realize how difficult it is to get simple chemicals to do what you want them to do under carefully controlled laboratory conditions. And so to think that on the early earth where chemistry just left to its own devices that somehow out of that is going to emerge again these elegant systems that you're looking at uh, that define biochemistry. What is it that you've actually observed in the cell? Well to me I think that if you have to if you ask me what is the one piece of evidence from biochemistry that is in my mind, it makes an open and shut case for a creator. It would be the genetic code. You know, and, and in common experience, we know that whenever you see a code, which is simply a set of rules that relate information in one context to information in another, and of course there's a variety of different codes that we use, but codes come from intelligent agents. If you see a code, you know that, that those rules were devised by a mind, and agreed upon by other minds as a means to communicate. And the heart of biochemistry is what's called the genetic code, which is a set of rules. And so in and of itself, the fact that a code is central to life suggests the work of a mind. But in recent years, biochemists have learned that this code is extremely optimized. It's exquisitely optimized to detect, or sorry, to minimize error when information is transmitted from one form to another in biochemistry. And that extreme optimization also like suggests design. And uh, because you have this, again, optimization, the genetic code cannot be a frozen accident, which is what uh, biochemists long thought and original life researchers long thought, that this code just happened to be a, a code that emerged by accident through evolutionary processes. So something had to shape the code. And the only option you have is natural selection, but we know that genetic, the genetic code can't evolve uh, because if it does evolve, it, it's lethal. What's interesting to me is that this is not just simply the perspective, again, of a, of a novice biochemist, a biochemist in the making. This is actually the recognition that many people have come to as scientists including atheists themselves. Just as an example, Francis Crick, who won the Nobel Prize along with Jim Watson and Maurice Wilkins for discovering the structure of DNA, uh, wrote an autobiographical account about the discovery of DNA. Francis Crick was also an outspoken avowed atheist. And this is what he says to conclude his, his autobiographical discussion of, again, the discovery of DNA called What Mad Pursuit. Biologists must, cert sorry, biologists must constantly keep in mind that what they see was not designed, but rather evolved. So that combination of optimization, the fact that a code reflects the work of a mind, 
the inability to explain it in evolutionary terms suggests it must be the work of a creator. <laughs>